Hello, I'm Adam Murray and welcome to Extra Time. It's a huge week for the Wofford Hurlers as they go into battle with arch enemies Cork this Saturday in Tardis. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Joining me tonight alongside Jack O'Connor and Mr Briggs is a former St. Ecknes student who was arguably Wofford's best player last year in a breakout season. Welcome to the show, Caden Lines. Thanks, Adam. Uh, first thing I want to ask you about is uh, when you were in school in Quebec, uh, you managed to reach an all Ireland final and won a Munster final. Uh, what was it like to have success with all your friends in school? Uh, I suppose it feels like a lifetime ago now, Adam. Uh, uh, Mr Briggs would probably tell you otherwise. I probably mightn't seen so long ago for him, but uh, no, it was un- unbelievable. Like, I think it was probably one of like, I haven't had many good days in in uh, on the hurling field do, thus far yet, but uh, uh, that year alone was definitely definitely um, definitely one I, I remember and I talk about probably the most when I when I when I when I mention hurling, not even hurling for the school but hurling in general. Uh, that year, monster final success and reaching all Ireland final, like is is probably the first thing I talk about when I talk about happy days on a hurling field. So, uh, as you said, to do it with your friends just. As well, like like uh, all the six years on the team at the time were all Bally men as well. So that that is that as well for fellas. I know that you you meet you meet fellas in first year when you when you're twelve or whatever, and you play with them all along. But I also won that with fellas that I've been in play school with since I'm three years old. Uh, so as special as winning with Bally is, it's, it's uh, winning with Clamac and in the school is is just as special. So yeah, definitely one of my more memor mem. Memory, memorable years uh, in the in on a hurling field, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, do you think you improved as a player to play at a high standard at that at a young age? Like? Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. I, I, I always said it growing up. I, I, I feel, uh, school fits given hurling in college isn't that isn't that far away from intercounty hurling standard as the same as uh, school hurling isn't too far from intercounty minor. I found that you're playing, you're playing, you're playing against other miners. You're other. You're playing against fellas. If you, you play against the same fellas that you actually play against in in senior in the county, I've I've hurled against. I can't remember what what team it was up in in Cork. All the most of semi final. I can't remember who he was, but uh, I played against him then in the other twenty one the minor years after that. So you're playing against a serious standard of of hurlers and. To improve as a hurler, you have to play against good good hurlers to improve. So, one hundred percent, I do. I do think it, as well as extra training, of course. Like at that age, you're probably some some of the players are only playing with their club. Others maybe are lucky enough to be playing inter county at the same time. So I remember we used to train after school, maybe uh, after, straight after school, four o'clock to five, into study then till six, and then straight from study to minor training. So like you're getting extra training, so obviously that has. Has an impact on improving your uh, your skills, absolutely. Yeah. You were sure. Um, that. Sorry, um, uh, on the topic of school hurling, you <coughs> captained the team in your last year in school. What teacher gave you the opportunity to captain the team? Uh, did he make him ask that question? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, of course, for Mr. Riggs, I suppose, and. Uh, I suppose Billy Welch and Mr. Murray. I, I, I'm not really sure which between between which one of them came up with the idea, but I hope between all three of them they kind of said I was the right man for the job. And it was a, as I said, playing for the school is a big honour, but uh, getting the captain as well is a huge honour because you're representing the surrounding clubs, surrounding Kilmac, which is it's an unbelievable honour. I know, like I know, I I, I, got, I was lucky enough to captain Ballyoff this year in the intermediate and. That was the first time I ever captained Ballyuff, and just a huge honour to ca- to captain your club, a club that you you've you've grown up and you, they they've raised you basically. Uh, and but being asked to be captain of Kilmac is basically being asked to be captain of a couple of clubs surrounding surrounding Saint Eclans that are all represented in the school. So a huge honour, and uh, yeah, just really really meant a lot to me now at the time. Yeah, Caelan, uh, I suppose. Adam, Adam would know that I, w- I wouldn't be a man for an exaggeration of hyperbole, but uh, we have another very special guest about to join us. Uh, Adam, again, it's no exaggeration to say some people have said that he is the greatest ever hurler never to play for his county. 
Could have been what this is. <laughs> they, they talked about building, I've heard they talked about building a statue of gold outside of Clan A, right? But the one thing <laughs> I heard, honors, no, same honors. Well, that's, yeah, well, they, I heard they're, they're naming it Billy Welsh Park soon. But yeah. one, thing, one thing I do know is that if he had his way, every inter-county manager who actually plays a sweeper would get capital punishment, would get the electric chair. So, uh, yeah, ruining her. He's here, he's here. Well, I know, I know. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> How's it going, lad? I just gave, just I, I, you there, sir. I, I just gave you a massive introduction there. Oh, lovely, lovely. Um, hopefully it wasn't all tongue-in-cheek. No, he said between heavy slitters and sweepers, you now we're going to get caught down on something rotten here. He <laughs> we could say something and we'll get some trouble here, lads. Um, but come here to me, Caleb, I suppose I'll take up the next piece. It's like, you know, you're in school and I suppose, look, you're lucky enough, you've got a lot of lads around you and they're, they're really good players. But I mean, we, we, we had my sister on the other night and she was talking about hard work. And like, you, you look at some of those players that you played with and... I've noticed over the last couple of years that a lot of them have fallen away now. They barely even play intermediate or junior for their own clubs. But yet you've pushed on, I suppose, from the school level up to the inter-county level. Can you just talk to us a small bit about the hard work that entails to get to that from, say, minor 21, but then to make that absolutely astronomical leap into the senior team? Uh, yeah, like you say, a lot of people say, like the typical fella, you can get on here... Uh, and I'm sure uh, the most people you do get on here just say, oh, you have to get down to the field. Uh, you have to get into the gym. You have to work hard. Like, and obviously you do. Like that, but that's just a typical answer to one of those questions. What, what you really need to do is just absolutely need to love it. And I don't know, uh, did you notice how much I did love it? I know you did, Billy, because you used to talk about how much I loved it. But uh, uh, I really, really love love it like and if you don't love it you won't work hard so you can say oh you need to work hard you need to work hard but you need to love it first to then in turn work hard so I think I just had an absolute love and and with the love came a want a want to play for Watford I think you need to want it as well as to love it but they all come together I think loving it is number one you need to love you need to love your want to play if you get me you need to love doing it you need to love going to the gym to get better you might you might think oh you need to like find out what what's where you're falling down I, I always felt I was a bit slow so I love the fact I, of every exercise I done was to get faster and and I then I, I realised I was a bit underweight so I loved drinking weight gain in the morning and, and doing extra sessions in the gym more than the rest of the lads because that was what I was falling down on. So, yeah, I was working hard, but I was only working hard because I actually loved it. If you don't love it, you don't love it. It's not your cup of tea, that's fine. Like, But if you really, really want it, you have to love it because it's a, it's a bit of a slog. So you have to enjoy the slog or else you, you just you just won't do it. You just won't do the slog and then it won't pay off for you. So um, that's what I found anyway. I'll let Billy come in there in a second, but... I suppose one of the big things that were, I'd remember always from and that year would have been that All-Ireland semi-final. And apart from the fact that it was an unbelievable game, I'll never forget, like, we went up on the bus and Adam and Jack, like, you probably know more about it now, but we went up on the bus and, like, we're all hyped up for the game and, like, everyone was ready to go. And next thing I said, right, we're, 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 we're out in the field for a pucker out. And next thing, all of a sudden, we said, right, we're, we're going now, we're into the restroom. Couldn't, couldn't see any of the lads. I looked down at the bottom of the field, and there they are all taking selfies with some lad at the side of the pitch. And I was like, I was literally going mental, going, like, the, no focus here, what's going on? But all the boys had spotted this new comedian called Rory Stories that nobody knew about. And all the lads were down taking selfies. But, like, that was the great thing about that team. You were able to kind of refocus then very quickly for the game. There was an awful lot of characters in the team. And good leaders, so they could they could bounce from hurling to you know to good crack back to hurling again, and like the game itself was epic. What do you remember about that day, Billy? Um, oh God, what do I remember at that day? So <clears throat> the hurling itself, the hurling was unreal, right? That, I think that was the best game I was ever involved in as a player or a manager. Like the ball was just flying. I'd say if if someone wrote a script for that game, they couldn't have wrote it any better. Even the whole thing of remember Span having to leave to get on a plane yeah. and tears oh, rolling down. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy stuff. Um, the two balls that I say and we say went over the bar that were waved wide. Um, Brian Murray 
who's probably the coolest person ever, no temper whatsoever, going mad at those balls being waved wide. Um, Billy Power coming up to get the, was it the leveller from corner back? Yeah, bring to extra time, yeah. Like, it, it was just a crazy game. Um, and I, I suppose, and, and Caleb, you were on a young lad, and he's playing for actually Antrim now. Antrim now, he, I seen him, he was, he was in the headlines last week, wasn't he? Yeah, and, and you yeah, know what? Yeah. Never more fitting, because the two of you that day tore lumps out of each other fairly, honestly, hardly, and, and are manly. And the skill you showed, so I think it was very obvious that day that the two people out of that 40 players that probably played, the two people was their number 11 and our number six. They were going to go on to play senior inter-county and, and they did. Yeah. Another thing that kind of, that, that year, which was very, like, it, it was not the start of the sweeper, but a, lo a lot of the teams we played against, they, they bring their corner forward out almost like a, like a say, third midfielder. And like to be honest, when you'd see that, I remember absolutely rubbing our hands because that, what that would mean is we'd bring our corner forward out. Both teams didn't have a sweeper, and sure, like we had Caleb Lyons, who like is the Tom Brady or Hurling best quarterback. That people talk about Ty DeBurka, and I'm not picking him up here. Unbelievable! You were easy the best man I've ever seen with half a hurley to find a player anywhere from thirty to forty yards. And sure, all you, all we were doing then was. You know, putting balls down channels, finding men. Like, it suited us so much. And, like, it's still to this day, I know, Billy, you have a great there and with sweepers, etc. But, like, you see you see Limerick now and everyone's talking about how good they are with 30-yard balls, finding hands, moving off the shoulder. Like, there was, I, I saw lads in Kilmack doing this five years ago. And people are saying that Limerick have somehow revolutionised the game. So, you know, it's a... Uh, it, it's funny how you can repackage something and someone else says it's been reinvented. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know about reinventing the game. I think, I think it's trends and trends are always kind of, they come and go. So back to probably the lads aren't old enough to remember, but the Gerlach Nan time when Clare won the All-Ireland and the trend was you absolutely dog someone, you dog your players. And then, then Jimmy Barry Murphy comes along and suddenly the new trend was no. You want your players fresh and you want to bring stick men in and let them express themselves. So, so I, think, I think trends come and go, but, but definitely Limerick. Limerick have it mastered at this stage, I think. I, I, like, I can't see anyone beating Limerick, to be fair. That, I know I'm going off topic, but, um, but they do have their game plan mastered. Adam, back to you. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about, like, playing with lads from Ballyduff in the school as well but uh, you actually reached the intermediate county final as well this year and it must have been great like to go on a long run with the club yeah unbelievable Adam you know uh, we're a really really small little place uh, Ballyduff um, we're, and we're a very very young team a lot of the, a lot of the uh, players that would have been playing the other day have gone through Kilmack and were involved in, in, in that muscle final win in 2015 and um, it's not too long ago that Ballyoff was, was in a terrible, terrible position. You know, my first year with Ballyoff was junior hurling after uh, the club had been senior for 10 years. And I'd grown up watching, watching Ballyoff playing against Ballygunner and De La Salle and Mount Sine senior team. And God, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get up and play senior hurling for Ballyoff and play against all these big, big shot clubs and whatever. But um, my first year then was the year after they got relegated. They was a junior. So there was a bit of a trapdoor situ situ situation happened. They went from senior down to junior in the space of two years. And uh, it was devastating for the club. Like, I remember my father was over the team when the team got relegated from intermediate down to junior, which is just, it's a, t a tough team to take. And then you had players leaving. Jack Kennedy went to De La Salle. John O'Leary went to Mount uh, A couple of others went back home. Like, there's a lot of, there was a lot of lads in Butler Town playing for Valley Off. They went back and... Then all of a sudden, the team that was in the inter intermediate county final there last week was more or less what was playing in 2014 when we we're only 16, 17, you know, trying to trying to lead the club on your own. And I remember having 16 for a, 16 for a championship match, a junior championship match in 2015. We'd we'd only 16 at, and uh, uh, and the sub that that we had that day was only asked to come along. He wasn't training at all with us, and we'd only seven and eight training. And then to turn around and then four years later be not that far from being senior hurling again, it was a huge, huge, huge honour. But 
at the same time you'd be absolutely devastated and it, you, it doesn't there's no such thing as a as a as a honorable defeat i think you say there's no like good moral defeat a lot of people say oh look we we lost but we done well i don't know i think there's no such thing as that in hurling you, you either win or you lose like and to lose a county final is devastating absolutely devastating like but but under underneath it all, you have to kind of realise where you came from and and who you are and stuff, and then you have to kind of realise, yeah, in fairness, it's still a good achievement, but it doesn't take away from being inches away from it, inches away from that dream that you looked on when you were growing up watching watching these lads, like you know. But um, no, still Eastern final success. Uh, if you said that to us, then when we had sixteen for that for that championship match, only what three or four years previous, now absolutely no way you would have said so. When you put it into perspective, it is it is a good achievement, I guess. Yeah. And Caleb, you, you mentioned your fa- your father there. And I suppose we, again we spoke last week to my sister about the importance of parental involvement. And uh, like your father would have been the mo- minor manager, Wolf minor manager. I think it was a 2015 and 2014. Uh, he's, you know, you you mentioned here relegation, but thankfully, I suppose from his point of view, he's manager this year. Like, I mean, it doesn't fall, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, yourself and your brother. But like, can you talk a small bit about, you know, the importance of him uh, in the support structure, I suppose, at home and, you know, making that extra step up the ladder as you go in your hurling career? Yeah, in fact, as, as much as uh, he, he'd love to hear me say this now, and I, I'd hate to say it, but he, he has credibility to his name and fairness. He's five senior county medals, like, uh, which I have to look at passing down the hall every day. But um uh, and he would shove, you, shove them in your face as well because they're, they don't, they're hard to come by and belly up, I tell you. But uh, uh, no, he, in fairness, he he, uh, he knows his stuff. He's been he's been there, as I said, the credibility speaks. Like, um, you do listen, and you do listen when he speaks because he's done it before. He's he's been there. He's he's done the tough battles. He's he's played in monster club finals. You know, he's he's been there. So <clears throat> what he says. When he when he speaks, he kind of know he's kind of like this. He is talking sense, and I think that echoes through the whole Bally Up squad as well. Um, I think I, I I feel there is a lot of respect for him in in the club. Um, I hope there is, but it seems that way anyway. Um, I hand I remember I handed him the trophy. Then when we when we bet on Hill this year in the Eastern final, I handed him the trophy and I said soak this one in because he've had a lot of bad days with Bally Up. Because uh, he was involved now, he was one of the selectors now as well when Ballyduff got relegated from senior down to intermediate, and then he was the manager when Ballyduff got relegated from intermediate down to junior. So for him, I, I remember I, I see on the video when when the final whistle went against Don Hill, he just dropped to his knees, you know, with the light, and you can see what it meant to him because he has had a tough with 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 Ballyduff, and it, and it's not to no fault of his own. Right? Well, I don't think some other, some people might might say different, but. Uh, uh, and he's he's put us, he's put a slog in. You know he was over us last year, and we were beaten by Dunhill in the semi final by a point, and it absolutely it, it devastated him. And he was contemplating whether to come back this year at all. And after a few a few convincing words from me and me and the brother, I suppose he did, and I hope he's happy he done so because uh, as I said, we had a good year, but there was no one more devastated than him after the county final because we were so close and. And uh, I think, but I think the success this year is a lot, and a, a lot of people in the club will probably agree with me when I say it's it's owed to him, I suppose, from from his, just his hard work and to train and and like you see clubs clubs around around Bally, around Watford and surrounding us are are paying thousands for managers, and uh, we're like not paying in a sense. So for what he gives to the club is just unbelievable. And even in the background now, I know he's involved with the committee as well, and. He, he he had a good uh, foot in with setting up the uh, ash turf down below as well the new ball alley that we got which is I'd say I spend nearly every even down there you know like so so uh, uh, no credit to him on that as well yeah and uh, with Paddy Duff this year with the way things turned out he probably had a chance to experience kind of a split season and there's talk of coming in in general next year would this be something you'd be in favour of uh, going forward. Yeah, 100% Adam. I think the club player kind of gets stung in terms of the uh, playing two matches at the start of the year, especially in the senior grade. Two matches at the start of the year and then and then no match then until August. Like you're, you're, you're basically, you're, you're nearly telling, telling the club player to go away for the summer and come back. Like it's, 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 it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And I think with the pandemic this year, it actually kind of showed 
to the county board that it is possible to run off a club championship in a month and a half. So why not do it every year? Like in what was it August? Just end of July, August, the whole championship was run off and not not one bother. So why can't you do that every year? I don't I don't understand it either. But um, no, absolutely. I think I think yeah, f- especially for the club player, the split season is the way forward. And uh, talking about like really want to play Harden or having a drive to play Harden, but uh, what was it like coming into the Warford team a few years ago? Like there was a big buzz around the county, you're going well at the time. And like, what was it like coming into a, a setup with the likes of Brick Welch and lads you would have kind of idolised growing up? Yeah, it was, it's a bit, it is a bit nerve wracking. Like, I won't sit here and lie and say, oh, I was grand, I walked straight in and not a bother. I went, like, I remember driving up the road for my, I had a trial match. I remember I was playing, it was it was a Fitzgibbon challenge match when I was spotted because I remember seeing Paul Fan was the manager at the time. And I remember walking in at half time and I seen him looking, looking there. And I was like, oh, geez, there he is. And getting right nervous and everything, getting right blocked up because, as I said, how much I wanted to play for Warford. And, like, I, I was thinking, oh, every ball, how do I do on that ball now? Because I was actually seeing him and stuff. And and, and I was right nervous. But he texted me after that game, Annie, and asked me to the trial match. But I remember being so nervous going up to my first trial. It was up in uh, Colligan. We were playing a cha- just a challenge match between ourselves. And I remember being so nervous that I, I said to myself, I don't care how this goes, I just want, I can't wait till I'm driving home because I was just so nervous. I didn't, I, I was freaking out. And then walking into dress rooms and seeing GPS systems and this, that and the other. And I didn't know who to ask to say, here, what's the story with these yokes? How do you even put this sports bra on? Like, you know, with the GPS system and and uh, just kind of keep my head down. And then, but like, as you said, like the likes of Bricks and these fellas are, are quick enough to come over and introduce themselves and, when someone of, of that calibre comes over and introduces you, sure you just settle straight away. So because if the most respected man of the team is over talking to you, surely what, what do you have to be worried about? You know what I mean? But uh, it doesn't take long before, as you know yourself, playing hurling with, with new lads in school, when you get trained, you're going to hand pass the ball, they'll ask your name before they before you hand pass it in the warm-up or in the drills. And next thing you know, in a the match, then they're calling your name and they're chatting to you. And then after the game, then you're, I was driving home, then I was thinking, what was I so nervous about? Like, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's, it is, it's nerve-wracking, but it's, it's, it's nerve-wracking for everybody. It's, it, uh, but you, you learn after that. There's no need to be nervous, I suppose, but you probably, as I could, t- I could sit and tell you, if you're go- if you're coming in for offer next next week, I could tell you there's no need to be nervous, no need to be nervous, but you will be like it's it's natural, but but uh, you settle down soon enough, I suppose. And Caleb, now you look, we can we can tow the party line here, and we can say sure I'll play anywhere for Waterford, but I suppose over the last couple of years, like I've seen you playing cornerback, fullback, wingback, and a little spy tells me you're playing midfield lately as well um, in a, tr- a challenge game. I suppose, where would you see yourself as being uh, best positioned or where would you like to play going forward? Well, as, you, as I'm more, more usually known as, and as well, you, you'd probably know me better as a back because I, I, play backs, I, I play backs the whole way through school, really. And uh, uh, I was minor back and I'm a 21 back. But Valley uh, Off kind of, they... Last last year they kind of pushed me up to midfield, uh, to try to try maybe get a bit of scoring going, uh, and I really really enjoyed it. You know, I like just loved the free, the freedom of the of the whole thing, being able to read the game a lot more because if with Ballyoff especially if you can f- kind of feel that we're under a bit of pressure, I could just tell uh, Chip our centre back maybe here you just take a step back you now and I just watch the centre forward, and same if we need to score then the opposite I'll just start pushing on a bit which is a lot of freedom so I really do enjoy midfields um, in terms of for Walford it's hard it's hard to know because it's a whole a whole different story I, like I was putting the full back line last year and I never played there before and I remember kind of just saying to myself here like you just have nothing to lose here now I know I, know I had everything to lose because of basically a trial in a league game like and uh and uh, just going at it as hard as he could, because that's what I think fullbacks are supposed to do. Because I remember playing in the forwards very, very young, and the thing I used to fear the most was a fullback going at it as hard as he could, because he come straight through you. So that's the way I looked at it. But uh, to answer your question, I don't know. I suppose I really do enjoy midfield. Whether that's my best position, I don't know. But that's what I enjoy. 
Um, but to be honest, I'm just happy to be out in the field. If I'm picked in the first 15, I don't care if it's corner forward, to be honest, I just like being out there. So um, I wouldn't be disappointed if I was post corner forward or on goal or whatever. I just I like being out there. So that's the only way I'd be disappointed if I was in the bench. Actually, Kate, if I come in there, you might know this, but if if you remember back far enough, I would have played you midfield on probably in my first year in the school. And myself and Shane had rows because I would have always wanted to play midfield. Um, I would have felt you read the game or read the game very well there from the breaks, from the half forward line, the half back line. But I remember Briggs going, no, no, no. Caleb Lyons is our centre back. So, so there's just a, a tidbit of information. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember. Monster final, we lost it on the uh, under 15. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember. To uh, Boris Lee, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, they were good yeah. times. Mm. Right, let's let's get a bit controversial here now. Jack, question for you. Slitter, new slitter, is it too light? A lot of scores in the game, 36 points at the weekend. Uh, Limerick <coughs> scored 123. Lads are pucking the ball over the bar from over 100 yards. Do you think that slitter's too light? Um, Not really, in my opinion. Like You like to see a lot of scores going on when you're watching the matches. And it's... When you would see a match and... You'd only see 13, 14 points in a hurling game isn't really that enjoyable to watch. So I think when you see that amount of points going over, it's, in my opinion, it's an enjoyable game. Yeah, I totally agree with Jack, to be honest. Adam? Um, I don't know. With the yellow slitters now, I suppose they're just a different colour and same weight and all that, but it looks a bit strange having them out there. Uh, I suppose all the old fellas be giving out saying, oh, back in my day with a big heavy slitter now and they couldn't be scoring points and all that. But uh probably makes the game more exciting anyway and definitely more kind of free-flowing. So I'd be far the way, the way it is now, yeah. Caleb. I think I agree with Jack. I, I think the more scores, the more enjoyable, the more, like, why do, do you not want us to score? Like, like, do you know what I mean? Do you not want us to like make the game more exciting I think more scores there's more excitement I, I don't understand why people want to have your slayer I don't I actually I can't work it out at all Billy um, I'll disagree with him <laughs> surprise surprise um, going after Facebook I was expecting this now yeah I know I was, I was expecting the question too um, I okay so I think more scores don't doesn't equal more excitement I feel and, and again, I'm looking back, say it, you might remember, if you look at YouTube, you'll see The Rock coming out from Cork, hitting a lad of shoulder and putting the ball over from his own 21. And that kind of garnered the whole crowd because it was, it was a rare enough occurrence. Whereas now I see lads clipping balls over the bar, 100 yards. It's kind of like, yeah, whatever, should we see it every day? Now, that's not the players' fault. The players are they're more skillful than they ever were. They're fitter than they ever were. And the game is faster than it ever was. So I think standards-wise, the game is better now than it ever was, if you looked at every player. But I think as a spectacle, if you look back at, say, the 2009 final with Kilkenny and Tip, the ball is in play a lot. There's, the ball is up and down the pitch, and there's hooks, and there's blocks. And Whereas I feel now, because the players are so good, what's happening is it's, it's almost like basketball. There's... There's a passage of hurling that lasts maybe three or four pucks, and then it's out of play. I just feel, feel it's very stop-start. And I would prefer if, and, and I suppose also, the, the, merit, the, the weight of a goal is actually demerited by score. Like, if you're scoring 30-something points in a game, well, you're kind of saying to yourself, well, I actually don't need a goal. So I think the last game was there one shot on goal, one effort on goal. I'd rather if there was a team getting 215, 3.15 and the ball being in play a bit more. Now, how do you get around that or how do you change that? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe give more pints for a goal, give five pints for a goal. In saying that, maybe teams, if, I mean, they'll just decide, okay, we're not going to concede goals and we'll play extra men back as opposed to going forward. I don't know. Um, but I, I just feel... The, the passages of good hurling are a rarity now because players are so comfortable striking balls over the bar from 100 yards. So I would like to trial a heavier slither 
and I'd like to trial five points for a goal and see what happens. The game is in a good state, but I don't think we should kind of bury our heads in the sand and think we can't make it better. So that's that's kind of my um, my thinking on it. Yeah, well, I suppose the lads here would be much too young to remember it, but they actually had a similar issue in rugby back in the late 80s where I suppose penalties were three points and at the time scr- or tries were actually four. And like that, people were just uh, taking penalty after penalty after penalty after penalty. And now we see modern day rugby where they've gone to the five points where they'll go to the corner an awful lot more and you're going to see more attack and play. So it, look, if you're going to be trying and stuff, which they've done over the last few years, they've trialed some bizarre things in the GAA. I, I have no problem trialing the, the five pointers uh, for goals. And it would be interesting to see, would you, like when a guy gets a ball out in the middle of the field, would he think twice about putting it over the bar if he can spot a guy on his own inside for five points? Um, or would it lead to more sweepers and more, you know, more shut up shop? We won't concede. It'd be interesting. Though. It would be interesting. Speaking of sweepers, Billy, what's your what's your feeling on sweepers in the game? <laughs> um, do you know? Okay, okay. I get away from the whole sweeper, not sweeper. Okay, because because you can play a sweeper and you can play attack and hurling. Do you know? Like I suppose Wexford showed that to a degree. So while I'm not against sweepers per se, I I am against um, I am against being defensive to the detriment of your attack and play. So I suppose my thinking is anyone can park the bus. I don't think that's very innovative. Whereas I think real innovation comes when, when you try and break down the opposition and take risks and take chances. I think that's what makes our game brilliant. But I'd be interested to get Caelan's take on this, but actually I think Wexford, to me, would have in, been much more innovative with the sweeper because yeah. speaking to like someone who I know someone involved with Wexford, they actually don't expect their sweeper to cut out ball because inter-county teams are, are so good at delivering the ball now. But what they expect the sweeper is to be an offensive weapon. He comes yeah. off the shoulder. He comes at pace. And in fact, they encourage, a bit like football, they encourage guys to go. So like their cornerbacks, their wingbacks have license to go up the field. But I mean, that look that you're relying on a whole team offense there and defense at the same time. So, like, uh, uh, Caleb, you probably noticed the evolution of, I wouldn't say sweeper, let, let's call it, say, get filtering men back over the last number of years. Yeah, it's, there's, there is, a, as, as much as it probably, Billy doesn't want me to say this, but it, there is a bit of a football type kind of thing coming into Harlan slightly. Uh, in the way that wing backs are are told now to it, when the when the ball goes over their head they're sprinting back to cover ground and just co- cover space as well and every every team is doing that that's that's uh, that's just well known but uh, but Wexford just kind of out and out play like a football team they they just have the license for their, their wing backs and their cornerbacks to go forward uh, because what good is whoever the corner for what good is John McGrath if he's if he's following the corner back up the field, sure he's not going to get a goal up there, is he? And he can they can do that as long as they want because they have the extra man sweeper at the back anyway. So look, I, I find it frustrating playing against a sweeper. I I have never played with a sweeper, so I I don't know I can't like I have I have played against sweepers where we're kind of forced into a sweeper, which it is frustrating because we're not used to playing sweeper. I don't we never we don't train with a sweeper or same at Bally Off, never train with a sweeper, but we played against sweepers. But I find it very frustrating, but I suppose that's the point of it as well. It's just a tactical part of hurling. I don't know, I don't disagree or agree with it, it's just part of the game now. I remember I was playing a challenge actually again. It was a challenge match. It was a nothing game. And uh, I was playing centre forward and they played a sweeper. And I remember just being fed up because it was a junior hurling game, the end of my career. And I was just kind of, I was just there to, you know, just enjoy myself. And I remember turning to your man, the centre back, and I said, this is a joke. I said, like, how about you leave us play nice hurling and you go off and jog it out with your sweeper. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm a forward, so, or midfielder, I suppose. So um, so I I see it in a different way, maybe. I hope he gave you a shot of the hurling the ribs. Yeah, into the ribs, yeah. (laughs) No, no, himself and the sweeper just squashed me, so there was no real... (laughs) (laughs) And uh, you're facing Cork at the weekend, Caelan. Probably had a couple of challenge matches uh, in before this week, but uh, would you have rather, like, say in football, they got a couple of National League games in, would you think that would have helped your preparation for this week? 
that's a good question, Adam. Um, uh, yes, yes, and no. I, don't, I, uh, I didn't think there was need for the football league. I thought it, I thought I was actually worried over it. To be honest, I thought it could have. It could have went wrong, and I thought maybe the GA could have been pulled altogether. But that was being, being a bit selfish, I suppose, thinking about the hurling. Uh, yeah, I think the national leagues are just uh, at this stage anyway, because of the way the whole year has gone. I think they would have been only kind of blown up challenge matches anyway. So, do I think they would have held preparation? It's, it's hard to know because. It's not as if Cork have got to play a lot of national league games or anything like that. So uh, it's it's not as if we're 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 less than them or anything. You know, we we've had the opportunity to play challenge matches, so have they. Um, so I to be honest, I wouldn't think of me. It would have made much of a difference to be honest, Adam. But uh, the challenge matches we played have been have been just as competitive as any league game I found. So so the preparation is probably just the same to be honest. And uh, you're looking forward to playing like a knockout championship, like no kind of back or well, there is a back door, but no like group matches, just like Munster semi final, and if you win, could have a chance of a final then. Yeah, I think I, I've said before that it's not necessarily easier, but it probably to just win one game and be in a Munster final is a, is a big addition to having to play f- what you, you would have to play four and win three of them to get into a Munster final. In normal years, so it's definitely easier in that sense, and it's more exciting for us because you kind of say to yourself, "Lads, just win this one game, you get to play in the Munster final." Like it's unbelievable, kind of when you put it like that. Um, all you have to do is win two games in a row, and you're in an All Ireland semi final. So when you break it down, just 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 two games or just one game, even the serious opportunity to be got from this game on Saturday. Should we win, we're we're guaranteed a quarter final, which which means a, a run out in Crow Park as well. So it's it's wicked exciting if you can just get over Saturday. Um, uh, but I suppose that's the hard part. We just have to wait and see how that goes. Um, in terms of my looking forward to it, absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait now. It feels like Christmas now, waiting for this now for so long. Um, trying, I found it hard now trying to to block out. All the negativity over 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 lockdown and even even in the last week even the, this not going ahead like I remember on Thursday of last week there was t- two or three lads in work had me fully convinced that it wasn't going ahead like and I expected to go to train that night now with bad news like you know that kind of way and uh, for final like I was talking to the lads as well today in work and just it's finally here like it's nearly like finally of all the the hurdles that were in the way of it and all the no, it's not going to go ahead. And even a couple of days ago, like it's it's finally here, and there's nothing can stop it now. It's it's going to happen. Like so, I cannot wait for it just to get out into the field and enjoy it. And uh, suppose we'll do a prediction for the match. The start with you, Mr. Briggs. How do you see it going? Uh, well, look, having watched Waterford a good few times, I suppose um, pre-COVID, I was really really impressed with. Some of the newer players, Caelan was in his second year now and I thought like he was, he'd been outstanding during the league. I thought Neil Montgomery from my own club, um, really, really impressive, athletic, big, strong. He's kind of struggling from injury. My only worry for Waterford back then was, like I think there's still a lot of progression in that Waterford team, but I'm not too sure this is the year we're going to see it. Can they come up the two or three, four, five percent that's going to need to beat Cork? I think the conditions are going to play a part as well. Uh, Cork, they're going to let you hurl. Look, what's good for Waterford, I suppose, is Cork, Darryl Fitzgibbon is missing, Owen Cadigan is missing, but then on the other side of it, you have Neil Montgomery, you got um, Pork is missing, you know, kind of probably just back from injury. So there's a lot of kind of variables there. I think it's going to be an open game. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I, I'm like, Caelan is enthusing me now for hurling. Like last weekend, I thought it was a bit of a dead rubber. It never really sparked, took off. Whereas this weekend now is real, it's going to be a real championship because it's going to do or die. I'd love to see a Waterford win, but unfortunately, uh, I just don't see it. I think it'll be close for long stretches. But to me, Cork, they need it. They're on the road a few more years of a more of a settled panel. I think Kingston coming back is going to enthuse them even further. And I think they're just going to pick Waterford over the line. New Billy. Um, yeah, look, 
last week, and myself and Shane were texting. Remember, we said, you know, what's the score? And I, I've one prediction right. I said, I said Limerick by ten points. There was no excitement for that at all. I think, I think everyone kind of had a feeling Limerick were going to wipe the floor with Clare. Um, this one is totally different. Um, like what Waterford never fear Cork, and and I'd say Caelan, I, I don't think you've any fear of him whatsoever. Um, as Shane said, and and I actually love the way Cork hurl because they they lend themselves to a really good game because they will let you hurl. They just want to hurl themselves. They're happy to let you hurl, and it you know could be a bit of a shootout. There could be goals, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, kind of kind of go along with everything Shane said, especially in the Waterford forward line. Like a forward line, in my opinion, needs time to play together and not just one year. Like they need to be playing together a lot because there there has to be like fluency in a forward line. You you have to know like like they they be on about the tip forward line, right? And they'd be saying how how do they know where to move to create space? Well, that's just from playing with each other so long. There's no tactic there. That's just a fluency in their forward line. Someone moves left, so you you move left to cover out the space. I think that will come with this Waterford team. But I don't think yet. And I think um, I think Cork probably have a more settled team. So if I had 100 euros on it, I'd probably stick it on Cork. But I couldn't see there being too much in this now. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit if Waterford came out and, and gave him a fright. Especially the fact that that Cork backline will let you hurl. And you, 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 know, you could see Waterford tearing that Cork backline to shreds. You could see it happening. Um, but I suppose, as I said, if I had a hundred quid, I, I'd put it on Cork. Um, in saying that, there won't be much in it, I don't think. A hundred quid is a lot to be betting now. <laughs> <laughs> he, doesn't ha- he doesn't have it, that's why he's not doing it. <laughs> what about you, Jack? How do you see this going? Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Riggs and Billy about like how Claire and Limerick, it was kind of a dead game, like Everyone just knew that Limerick and Clare or Limerick were gonna be Clare handy. So uh, this weekend, like I could see, I can see both sides. I can see Cork win it, and I can see Waterford win it. But like even what I know about Limerick and Clare, the fans, I think that has a big impact. When say like if um, Waterford got a goal, there's not really any fans to give that G up if they were a goal down or anything like that. Um, so I'd say it'll be close enough. You're sitting on the fence? Yeah. Uh, I won't ask you, Caden, because I hope I hope you predict your water to win. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. He'll always back himself. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Leave it. And Adam, what do you think? And like Adam, don't be don't be sitting on the fence or going for the, the popular view here this week, like you did with the footballers. Tell us who's gonna win this game. Uh well, I actually could see Warford winning it because it was a lot tougher than the last few years. Uh like four games to get out of Munster. It was it was like very difficult to get out. You had to be a very strong team. But in a one off game and in November as well. Like it's just a different championship that we've never really experienced before. So I'll give Warford every chance to win that. And like every team has had well good preparation, obviously, but not what they're used to. And it's like kind of unpredicted circumstance. So I think Warford will win. That's actually a really good point. Like, like it's not summer hurling. So if it lashes out of the heavens, it evens up a lot. Like, and, and I don't think Cork will fancy a slow ball on a day or day. So um, yeah, that 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 could even up a lot in this whole championship, actually. I'll let her in. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking you might like a, a, an old dirty day, all right, and and dog it out because I'd say, Caelan, you'd fancy dogging, you, like you'd fancy dogging Cork, would you? Out of it? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I'd, I just, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to know. You just have to wait, wait and see on the day. Well, again, like how how do you how do you predict the rain? Like you just don't know. Like so. Yeah. And games take on a life of their own as well, you know. Yeah. I mean, let's hope. Let's hope for no sweepers, Billy. Uh, I can't see there being any sweepers. I think um, you know, Caelan might might have inside info, but no, I, like, and look, just because, like, obviously, there's going to be tactics there, and there's going to be men dropping, and there's going to be half back lines dropping. But I think generally, the two teams, they 
yes, they want to defend and they want to stop goals and they want to stop points, whatever. But I think first and foremost, they want they concentrate on their own hurling. And I think if two teams are doing that, you're you're going to have an attacking game. Um, so no, I think it'll be a good game. Yeah, I think so too. I think both teams will go to hurl. And like I said, I don't see much they're much being much in this, but I suppose look, and, and it's really it's a real cliche, but if the weather is bad, it, it often comes down to wants. Do you know who wants it more? And like I mean, look, I know I know Connor Prunty personally, and Jesus, there is a man who is an animal, you know what I mean? And like I know it's it's great for him now that he's captain of water for this year, I suppose not great for Park Manny. But like it's just look, it's November hurling. I suppose, Caelan, you will we'll kind of finish on this one, is that you probably would have done a lot of this kind of hurl in the last few years when it came to playing Fitzgibbon in the league in college. I mean, it is a totally different game. Oh, yeah, it is. Absolutely. But, um, like, Fitzgibbon hurling reminded me a lot of um, school hurling, for, for an example. And I remember we we, uh, we got out, we, we, we won the junior football last year and we, we went up, up and played Croom in Limerick. Uh, in, in the winter on the way up and the whole way up fellas were saying oh remember we played the school match there and the school match there and it's just and w- when we went and played it I, just, I said to myself after Jesus that just reminds you of school hurling and Fitzgibbon hurling just slog the ground falling under you just like whoever wins the rocks wins the game really like and and uh, whoever has the biggest want for the game wins it just comes down to just pure doggedness you can have all the skill in the world in, in Crow Park. The most skillful hurlers in Crow Park on the summer's, summer's day will win the game, but the whole the winter hurling is, is a completely different sport, and anyone that plays hurling will tell you that. Um, it comes down to just want more than more than actual skill. Like Adam, do you want to finish up there? So Yeah. Actually, can I ask Caleb a question before we go? This is this is um something I meant to ask him. So Caleb, if you don't mind, is that okay? No, I'll work with you, but yeah. Caelan, um, you would have hurled for Carlo IT, yeah? And the great DJ Carey would have would have coached you. Yeah, that was only for one year now, only one year. Yeah. Now, a year you're too young to remember, but myself and Shane, like he was, I suppose he was Henry Shefflin, TJ Reid, um, Horgan all rolled into one. He was just the superstar of hurling when when there was no superstars. What was he like to hurl under? Yeah, uh, I, I don't have too much experience uh, of him, uh, Billy. But I, 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 what I do remember was he was wicked for good for the handball, wasn't he? Uh, at the time or year, years ago, yeah. And I remember I was just poking the ball, and I, as I said, I don't, I didn't have much deals with him to be honest, because I only was there for a year. But um, uh, I remember I, this will stick with me. We were just hit, I was hitting the ball across the field, me and another fella, and he was walking down through the middle, and I mishit the ball and. And you know, I was on the other side of the field and he was on the other, and the fellow I was hitting to was on the other side and Kerry was coming down the middle and I mishit the ball and without even looking, just he just bent down and just smack all the way over to the right to the, to the, to the hand of the fellow I was hitting to and just kept walking and I was just thinking, this fellow is a genius. Like, uh, genius. Yeah, and just, I, I've seen all I've, I I I studied. I I was given the DJ Carey video for my I'd say for Christmas when I was about six, and I could tell you all the commentating on every clip and every I'd say at this stage. Sure, just Caelan, uh, to see him in real life now even was unbelievable. Like yeah. Caelan, Billy, why don't you used to do that every week at school training? Yeah, I forgot actually. <laughs> I thought it just came out of my head there. <laughs> Huge thanks to my guest tonight, especially Caden Lyons. The very best look on Saturday, Caden, and we'll all be cheering you on at home. Uh, thanks to everyone who tuned in to both interviews this week. We have lots of content to come in the future, so please like the videos and subscribe to our channel. The very best look to all water teams this weekend, and we'll see you soon on Extra Time.